Uh, so we continue uh, discussing descriptive statistics uh, and on the uh, previous lecture we discussed uh, statistics like uh, mean or median and uh, these things are called uh, collectively as measures of central tendency Uh, so, mean, median, mold, uh, they show uh, how typical element in uh, some sample, in some collection of uh, values uh, looks like. So, they show how typical element or typical value looks like. Uh, for example, uh, if uh, we have a research and um, uh, we know that uh, this research deals with uh, some several informants and uh, we know age of each informant and then we can find, uh, for example, mean age or median age. And um, for example, if we perform this research, uh, we probably have to uh, report uh, this mean age and to give uh, our readers uh, some idea about uh, what kind of people we include uh, in, this, in this research. Uh, for example, uh, if we consider some research uh, and we know uh, that mean age of informants uh, is for example 40 years uh, then uh, we understand, we conclude that uh, this research is devoted to adults. And um, if uh, we have some other research and uh, in this different research, um, average age is, uh, for example, 10, uh, we understand that uh, this is about children. Uh, so um, even if we get just one number uh, one numeric value that summarizes uh, all the data about ages uh, that we have. Uh, we have some idea what kind of uh, data, what kind of informants we have in our research. Uh, so uh, this is uh, this is what measures of central tendency uh, tell us when we use them uh, to summarize our data. But uh, of course, uh, measures of central tendency is not only, um, it is not um, the only number that uh, we have to know. Uh, for example, let us consider two different research uh, and assume that in the first research, uh, we have a variable age and uh, the values of this uh, variable is uh, the following. For example, for the first informant, we have uh, we have forty. Uh, then we have forty-three. Then we have, for example, uh, thirty-six. Uh, then we have okay, 
that is seven, then we have uh, 41, and then we have uh, 39, something like this. And in the second research, uh, again, we have variable age, and we have the following ages of our participants, of our informants. For example, 40, 70, 10, uh, 75, 5, something like this. So uh, each, uh, each study uh, has only five informants and their ages as uh, presented. Uh, what can you say about the scope of each study in terms of um, what, kind of, what kind of people uh, they recruited uh, and what, what kind of people they are interested in? Um, uh, again, we can use uh, measures of central tendency, for example, average, uh, and um, we can find average for both samples. Uh, what is average for the first sample, for the first study? Average or mean? You can just calculate it. Let me recall that mean is just an arithmetic average. Uh, so mean of x is just, we have to sum ev uh, everything and divide by number of elements. So what is mean for the first group? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, 40. And what about the second one? Again, 40. Yeah, that's correct. Um, are there any questions uh, about how we calculated these values? So I just use this formula. I sum everything that we have here and divide by five and do the same with these values. And we see that uh, mean values are uh, in both uh, in both samples, uh, in both studies uh, are the same. Uh, but uh, can we say that uh, on some qualitative level, um, the set of uh, expected informants in both studies are uh, the same? Can we say that they coincide? How can we describe uh, the studies in terms of age of their participants? and the differences between these studies. Any ideas? Uh, in the first set, uh, the age uh, is very close uh, to each other, uh, the mm -hmm. age of the participants. And in the second, uh, the ages are different, mm -hmm. very yeah. different. Uh, yeah, we see that uh, despite the fact that we have the same mean, the same mean value, and okay, basically, um, uh, in a sense, uh, in a sense, we can say that both studies are devoted to um, adults. Not at least uh, we can say that uh, they do not study exclusively, uh, for example, children. Uh, but we see that there is a difference between uh, the design of uh, these studies. We see that the first study. Uh, is devoted to um, just just people of age near for near forty plus or minus several ages uh, several years, and uh, the scope of the second study is much broader according to this data. We see that uh, there are some children included in our sample, and some uh, people of elder age, or some senior senior people, are also included into our sample. So we understand uh, that even uh, on very rough qualitative level, uh, we have a difference between these two samples. Uh, Sebastiano uh, suggests to use histogram to show this distribution, and this is a good advice. But even uh, we, just by looking at these numbers, uh, we see that there is a difference. And uh, so uh, to 
report this difference to include this difference in our summarization uh, we have to use additional uh, additional tool additional uh, statistical values and uh, this kind of values measure how close our values to each other and uh, they are called measures of uh, statistical dispersion how close or uh, on the other hand how far them from uh, each other so uh, we discuss measures of statistical dispersion Uh, they show how far or close uh, values uh, values to each other. Uh, and uh, uh, let us discuss uh, the first measure of statistical dispersion, uh, which is called variance. And let us try to invent this variance. Um, so we discuss variance. Uh, let me draw a line. And let me put uh, some values on this line. So, uh, for example, this is uh, one sample, and uh, this is another sample. And uh, we see uh, from just just by looking at these pictures, uh, so assume that we have some zero here or here. And uh, this is uh, some values um, that lie on this line. So each dot here represents just one number, one numeric value. And uh, we see from uh, this uh, from this picture that uh, dispersion of uh, this sample is larger than dispersion of this sample. So here uh, values are close to each other uh, and the range uh, is rather narrow. And uh, here uh, values are uh, different to each other. They are far from uh, each other. And we can see this visually. Uh, let us try to uh, construct some numeric value that will measure uh, this difference. And uh, first of all, I suggest uh, to plot on the same graph, uh, plot uh, some measure of central tendency. Uh, for example, uh, plot uh, the average value. Uh, average value or mean value uh, would be somewhere in the center of the picture. So uh, it would be probably somewhere here on this picture and somewhere here on this picture. So this is x1, x2, x3, x4, and so on, xn. And this is x bar, uh, which is uh, the same thing as mean of x. Uh, here x is just uh, a shortcut to uh, the following uh, so x is just uh, a short notation for the collection of all values uh, that we have on this picture. Uh, so we have x bar here and we have uh, x bar here. Uh, so now I want to measure uh, how far our, my values are from each other. But uh, let us uh, simplify our problem a little bit. Uh, let us measure how far they are from uh, this mean, because we know that mean is just a kind of um, value that represents, in a sense, typical element in our sample. It is, does not have to be just an element of my sample, but it provides me information about how typical element uh, looks like. 
Uh, so mm, let us measure uh, the difference between these values and uh, x bar. So uh, I want to uh, find uh, the following uh, the following differences. So x one minus x bar. X two minus X bar, and so on. Uh, these differences are actually measure how far my element from uh, this X bar. Uh, so now I, I have a question. Uh, I want just one numeric value. So uh, what happens if I just find the sum of all these values, of all these differences. So yeah, I have a question. Uh, what is the value of uh, this sum? If you know the answer, please send it me in uh, private messages uh, here in Zoom chat. And uh, if you don't have uh, idea, uh, we can begin. Uh, we can begin with uh, some numeric values, for example, uh, from the examples uh, above. Uh, for example, we have forty here, and we have numeric values of forty, forty-three, thirty-seven. Forty-one and thirty-nine. So uh, I want you to find uh, the value of this sum, uh, for example, for this data. Mm -hmm. So um, I just want to put uh, these values into this formula. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, if you have uh, any problems with doing this exercise, you can also ask me in private messages and uh, I can probably help you. So, I'm waiting for your answers. I have these five values. And we already know that uh, their average is 40. And I just want you to substitute uh, these values here.
So uh, if you obtained uh, an answer for this particular question, you can think about uh, the general question about this sum in general case. What happens uh, in this case? So uh, we have to find this, this sum of differences. For example, can you prove uh, if you if you found uh, the answer for this? Uh, example, can you prove that uh, your answer will be the same uh, for this general for this general case? Can I ask? Sure. Uh, Sebastian wrote in the chat that if we use absolute values, we find eight. But what is absolute values? It means uh, no minuses. <laughs> only... No, no, no. We don't have uh, we don't have absolute value in this formula. And actually, uh, actually, this is uh, the crucial point. Mm -hmm. uh, we have we have just we have just ordinary brackets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have several, uh, several correct answers. Actually, most of your answers uh, are correct. And um, actually, the answer is zero. And uh, it is zero in this case. And actually, it will be zero in this case uh, as well. And uh, the reason uh, is uh, exactly as uh, as you asked. Uh, the reason is that we don't put any absolute values here, and uh, so we have uh, positive and negative uh, terms in our sum. You know, for example, uh, if uh, the value that we consider, uh, for example, this value, is larger than uh, the average, then this term will be positive. And if we consider a value that is lower than average, then uh, the corresponding term uh, will be negative. So, uh, for example, uh, this term is positive, and uh, this term is negative. I'm sorry, I probably have to switch uh, the colors. For example, this is negative, and this is positive. And uh, in this picture, uh, everything is symmetric. So uh, positive and negative terms will cancel each other. And in general case, uh, we actually have the same thing and we can uh, even prove it. Uh, for example, I can say that, let me simplify this formula a little bit. I have uh, x1 plus x2 plus and so on plus xn minus x bar minus x bar minus x bar and so on minus x bar. I just rearrange terms in this formula. So I put these values here. And uh, I put these values here. And uh, after this rearrangement, uh, we see that we have like x1 plus x2 plus and so on plus xn minus n times uh, x bar. And uh, we have 
minus n times of our average but uh, what is average average is uh, this sum uh, divided by n so if i multiply this sum by n i just uh, have this term to cancel each other and then i just have to subtract uh, from this sum the same sum so the result is zero And uh, we see that if we just uh, keep our differences like this, uh, we, uh, we will have zero as an answer. And we do not have any meaningful value. Let me recall that we wrote uh, this sum uh, to measure uh, some, in a sense, average distance between points uh, here and the uh, average value. What can we do? How to fix it? What if uh, I want to get not zero, but something meaningful? Any ideas? Uh, Sebastiana uh, suggests to use absolute values. Uh, uh, as he previously suggested, uh, yes, and uh, Anna says the same thing. Yeah, actually, it is possible. It is possible just to put uh, absolute value uh, here. Uh, but in fact, do you like absolute value function? Uh, do you like to, to deal with it to make some analysis? Did you like it uh, in your mathematics classes somewhere? Uh, you probably don't. I think that we even uh, at school, we didn't have that, but maybe at university some had. Yes. Uh, this is just, this is just absolute value, it's just model числа. Uh, this is just x if x is positive and minus x is x if x is negative uh, so probably everybody are, are familiar with this function but i, I think nobody likes it um, because uh, you well you have to deal with this with this thing and uh, this can be a bit tricky uh, so actually mathematicians uh, usually do not like uh, absolute values uh, as well and uh, so uh, let us try to uh, find some other way to overcome this issue that uh, positive and negative terms can cancel each other, uh, but without taking absolute value. We want to just remove the signs of these terms. We want all the signs to be positive, but without using of this function absolute value. How to do it? how to remove, how to make something uh, positive, even if it is negative. We can change it slightly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, have, uh, I have good uh, ideas to square it. And this is actually what will we do instead of considering just these differences we will consider square difference so you know that uh, square of any number it doesn't matter is it positive number or negative number the score is positive and so scoring in a sense kills uh, the sign and um, so uh, we can consider the following expression um, so we again have these differences um, but uh, now we have square differences and we can sum them up
and uh, now all terms are non-negative and so they cannot cancel each other they are actually measure how far uh, the value from the average value and okay but if we are interested uh, in a sense in an average distance in an average difference between uh, these values and average value what should we do with this uh, sum what is our last step now we have just some of this uh, of these differences of scores of differences but we want uh, a kind of average what should we do So if you if we just uh, if we considering just a simple average, uh, like we discussed here, uh, we see that we just get all the values and divide them by n. So we can do something similar here. Uh, divide by n, but actually people do not divide by n most of, most often but uh, they divide it by n minus one. I don't want to discuss in details now why we should divide by n minus one. I just uh, will say that some statistical properties of uh, the value that is defined with uh, this um, denominator uh, are better than uh, if we divide by just n. I don't have any um, simple explanation for this fact and I don't want to uh, get into details now. But um, anyway, if n is large, it is more or less uh, more or less the same thing to divide by n or to divide by n minus one. So it's more or less the same thing to divide by 199. And uh, so if we uh, write uh, this thing, we will get uh, the so-called variance. So this is variance of X, uh, or better to say that this is unbiased sample variance. Uh, word uh, sample means uh, that we have some collection of values and we use this collection of values to find uh, variance. So this is calculated using sample uh, collection of values obtained from some experiment. Um, obtained as the data. And uh, word unbiased uh, refers to this uh, minus one. Uh, so if I omit this word unbiased, uh, if I use biased sample variance, uh, then I just divide by n. But uh, let us use unbiased sample variance uh, every time because we probably don't need uh, anything else. So let us look at uh, this formula and uh, let us uh, let us see that uh, this formula actually catches uh, the idea that we need that uh, it, it it catches uh, the idea of measuring uh, average distance okay not distance but square distance uh, between our values that we have and average value so it should measure some kind of range some kind of statistical dispersion uh, for example let me ask you a question um, assume that i have two data sets and uh, points in one data set are like this 
and points uh, in another data set are like this. And uh, points in the third data set are like this. So uh, let me denote uh, this is uh, data set uh, X, this is data set Y, and this is data set uh, Z. Uh, so uh, can you please uh, send me two private messages? Uh, how should I arrange uh, this data set by variance? So uh, I want to ask, uh, what can you say about variance of X uh, compared with Uh, variants of y and the same thing uh, about x and uh, z. Uh, where variance is larger. You see that the overall range, so the distance between maximum and minimum value, is the same for all three data sets. Uh, is it true that uh, their variance should be the same? Mm -hmm. Or uh, you can say that some variance is larger than another variance. Mm -hmm. I have two answers so far. So if you have any questions, um, just let me know.
Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I have some answers, uh, some correct answers and some incorrect answers. Uh, that's fine. Let us discuss it now. Uh, so first of all, we see that um, there are values that are identical in all three data sets, more or less identical. And uh, actually, uh, uh, what does it mean? Uh, it means uh, that, uh, for example, um, if I consider uh, the term in my sum, in this sum, uh, that corresponds to this value, uh, it will be the same for all three data sets because uh, I have my average uh, somewhere here, somewhere in between. So this is this is my average x bar, which is equal to y bar and which equals to z bar. Uh, this is actually I uh, I just I just chose my data sets in this way. So we see that uh, their average uh, is uh, the same. Uh, and uh, if I consider, for example, this element, we see that this uh, distance is the same as this distance and is the same as this distance. So they just coincide with each other. And uh, what differs? Uh, differs uh, is, uh, what is different uh, is uh, the position of this element. We see that uh, here uh, it is on with some, on some distance uh, from uh, the average value. Here it is pretty close to the average value. And here it is pretty far from uh, average value. And uh, the same thing on the other, uh, on the other uh, side of the picture. So uh, we see that uh, here, Uh, we see uh, one distance. Uh, here uh, we see a rather small distance if we compare with this distance here. And uh, here we see a rather large distance, this distance. And uh, so if we find the contribution of terms uh, that are given by these values and these values, uh, to uh, our variance, we see that uh, here this contribution is uh, the largest, uh, here it is uh, the second largest, and uh, here it is the smallest. So uh, if I compare uh, variance of y is smallest, uh, the next one is uh, variance of x, and the next one is variance of z. So the, di the distance between these points uh, is uh, in the middle. And here some points are very close to average. And so they gives a small contribution to our variance. And uh, here, uh, this is vice versa. We have large, large uh, variance due to, due to this, these large differences. Are there any questions about uh, this this example? So, uh, if you provided wrong answers, uh, do you see uh, why uh, why it is wrong and why my answer is correct? If you have any question, just do not hesitate to ask them. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have questions, uh, then I have one. Actually, this is a rule of this course. If you don't have question that, uh, then you have to answer my questions. Okay. Uh, so uh, let me let me give you another example that uh, deals with uh, that deals with histograms. Uh, let us draw two 
again two data sets and uh, now i will represent these data sets as uh, the corresponding histograms so for example in one data set i will have something like this Uh, this is my first histogram. Let me denote this value as x. And um, this is the second histogram. Let me denote this value by y. So each histogram uh, represents some sample. And uh, we discussed on the previous lesson how to draw hist histogram using sample. So um, let me recall that the height of the corresponding rectangle measures how many uh, elements of a sample we have in the corresponding small segment, uh, which is the basement of uh, this rectangle. Uh, so. Again, uh, the question is to compare uh, compare variances. Again, I'm waiting for your answers in the private messages. Which one, uh, which variance is larger? So if you are unsure, you can try to draw uh, some values uh, that satisfy this, uh, these histograms. So you can just put some points on the horizontal axis uh, in such a way that uh, the, the larger your rectangle, the more points. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, it seems like all the values they are all the same. Yes. Mm, what do you mean? Mm. So we have some uh, 
um, do, do you mean that uh, the height of this rectangle is the same as the height of this rectangle? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, uh, well, maybe, but not necessary. Mm. I want to say that the height of this uh, rectangle is proportional to uh, to the number of elements that lie here. So this is histogram. So if I put uh, if I put some elements, uh, I would put a, a small amount of elements here, slightly larger number of elements here, even larger number of elements here and uh, even larger number of elements here. So e each dot that uh, I wrote is one element of my sample. So mm -hmm. uh, it will look like this uh, on this top picture. Mm -hmm. And, and this that to... the rectangle is proportional to the points, yes? Yes, to the number of points, yes, yes. It, actually, this, uh, this histogram measures, it, it, it shows how many, how many values you have in a, in a particular region of, uh, of your space. So mm -hmm. uh, for example, if it is, if, uh, it is age, uh, you see how many people of some uh, middle age and here is how many people of some uh, larger age and so on, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, I see uh, several answers that variance is the same. Uh, can anybody who believes uh, that uh, this is true uh, argue why is it true? Why do you think that it is true? Why do you think that variances are the same? So, any, any ideas? Why, why do you think so? So they diverge in the same way from the mean. Um, num, num. But um, uh, who, di uh, who diverge? Why do you think that these values that we have diverge in the same way? So uh, in both cases, we have the same mean. It is in the middle of the picture, like this. This is mean of X, this is mean of Y. And we have all these differences. Mm -hmm.
So uh, let me um, let me add some points here. Um, again, I have to add points uh, that will uh, correspond to this histogram. So uh, in which segment uh, should I put uh, the most number of points? In the side segments or in the middle segment? In the middle, yeah. In the middle, in the middle one because we have the, the largest rectangle here. So I have to put a lot of points here. Uh, smaller value of points here. Even smaller values of points here. Okay, let me be three points here and two points here and only one point here. Right? So uh, this picture is compatible with this histogram. And now uh, if I uh, try to find um, these differences that I have to I have to square and then average. In this picture, uh, I would have uh, a lot of distances like this, like this or like this. We have a lot of them, right? And uh, in this case, I would have uh, only a small amount of uh, these large distances. And most of the distances uh, will be uh, like like this, rather small, like with this point, or um, inside of this segment. Uh, so, which variance is larger? So I guess now I see that the variance on the first picture is larger since we have more elements which diverge from the mm -hmm. like mean value yeah exactly exactly the variance of x is larger than variance of y um i put uh i put some points here just to visualize this thing just to make it more um, approachable but actually, if you see just this uh, histogram, you you probably have an idea how your data are distributed, and so you probably have some idea about about the the variance. So uh, actually, uh, my idea is that we, we have some formulas in our course, uh, but uh, what we really need uh, in most of cases are not. Uh, formulas, but some uh, intuitive understanding of the concepts that we use. So actually intuitive understanding is uh, tested by the ability to answer this kind of question. You see that uh, there are no numbers uh, on these pictures at all. So this is a qualitative question. But to answer this question, you have to, you have to understand how variants work. And actually the answer um, it, it, it would be very uh, difficult for me to explain you why answer is uh, this one without providing uh, this formula. So um, from time to time, uh, we will discuss some formulas like this. Uh, can you repeat the answer yes. and uh, one more time? Uh, uh, here, this story. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, see, uh, according to this, according to this histogram, we have uh, a lot of points here and here uh, near the ends of the range. Uh, so if you think about this value, for example, as an age uh, of some participants, uh, then this histogram shows that we have a, a lot of elderly people and a lot of children, but a small amount of uh, just, just an adults. And uh, when we uh, will calculate, uh, when we will calculate uh, this variance, uh, we have for each point in our data set, so for each participant, uh, we have to find uh, this difference between this uh, participant's age and average age. So this, this kind of difference. Uh, take a square of it and uh, then sum everything. And uh, in this case, uh, we have a lot of 
uh, terms in this sum that corresponds to these people and these people. And the corresponding terms are relatively large. And for this picture, uh, we have a lot of people uh, whose age is close to the mean value. And so the corresponding differences, uh, square differences, uh, will contribute a much smaller amount to the sum that we consider. And we have some larger, larger deviations like this one. But uh, the number of these large deviations, the number of elements with this large deviation is small compared with this picture because we have only one person here and one person here. So uh, this is why variance of X is larger than variance, uh, variance of Y. Okay, now, okay, thank you. Okay, uh, actually, uh, just to be sure you can, uh, you can just put some numbers uh, and, and, and calculate by hands uh, this, uh, this variance. It is a bit, well, you just have to do some arithmetic, but probably when you try to do it, you will get some intuitive uh, understanding of what's going on here. So you can just put some numeric values that satisfy these histograms and just try to do it. This is really a good exercise. Okay. Mm. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, we discussed uh, variance, um, uh, but uh, I have to discuss uh, another central, uh, another measures of statistical dispersion. Uh, actually, this variance uh, is rather good, but um, it has one drawback. Uh, let us assume that um, I have two data sets. And actually, these data sets uh, represent the same measurement. For example, I have several, I don't know, something that is, me uh, something that is measured in like in meters. I cannot, uh, uh, I cannot imagine a good uh, linguistic example, but let us pretend for a second that we are studying uh, some, I don't know, language of some animals and we are interested in their length. And uh, so we have some values here and uh, we measure these values in meters. Uh, but uh, later on, uh, we consider actually the same data set, but uh, we measure uh, these values not in meters, but in centimeters. Uh, the, 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 actual, the actual values, the actual animals are the same. So we have two data set, X uh, is length, in meters. And let me assume that I have some values here like, okay, it is very long. Let me make it a bit shorter. Okay, never mind. something like this. And uh, let me consider uh, another variable y, which measures the same thing, but in centimeters. So centimeters, I don't remember. How many centimeters in one meter? 100 probably. So we have 100 centimeters here, 200 centimeters here. 100 here and 400 here. So uh, I can say that uh, values of y uh, are obtained just by multiplication of uh, values of x by 100. And uh, what can you say about uh, the relation between variance of y 
and variance of X, how they are related to each other. So they basically the same values, but just units of measure changed. Uh, how variance changed? Let me recall that variance uh, is x1 plus x2 plus xn over, oh, sorry, I write the wrong thing. x1 minus x bar squared plus and so on, xn minus x bar squared over n minus 1. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, uh, what can you say about the relation between x bar and y bar? So, uh, we have y bar, and y bar is uh, y1 plus and so on plus yn over n. And this is uh, 100 times uh, y1 plus and so on plus 100 times yn over n. And uh, I can just, um, how it is called in English? just collect the terms and uh, say that uh, it equals to 100 times, right? And this is uh, 100, oops, sorry. I have to write X of course here. Uh, so, uh, we see that uh, if I multiply all values by 100, uh, then average value is also multiplied by 100. And this is actually what we expect. Because if I just switch units of measure from centimeters to meters, uh, then everything will change in the same way. And average will also change uh, in the same way as um, elements of our sample change. But what about variance? Okay, I have two answers and both are correct. Anybody else? So uh, I need a specific value. How to find variance of Y if I know variance of X? Mm, let us try to, to calculate it. Um, variance of Y equals to y1 minus uh, y bar plus and so on plus yn minus y bar. Everything is squared divided by n minus one. And uh, we know that y is equal to 100 times x. So 100 x1 minus 100 x bar squared plus and so on plus 100 yn minus um, one hundred y bar squared divided by n minus 1. And then uh, I can move uh, 100 and get the following thing. Uh, 
and uh, I want to move uh, this 100 out of uh, out of of this formula. And you see that uh, this 100 times this thing uh, is uh, under the square. So when we move it uh, here, we have to apply this square to both terms. Uh, you know that if you have a b squared is the same as a squared times b squared, right? So it will be 100 squared like this. And so this will be 100 squared like this. Oops, sorry, uh, I have some, oh, sorry, uh, I have, okay, should, what should I fix on the blackboard right now? I have, uh, I actually wrote something very strange. What should I fix? You have Y uh, in the last yeah. brackets all the way. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, now it is correct. And um, what can you say about this thing? Uh, what's this thing? Uh, it's a variable of x. Yeah, this is variance of x. Uh, so uh, we see that if we multiplied all values of uh, some variable by 100, then uh, variance is multiplied by 100 squared. So um, one can say that variance is not linear, it is quadratic. And um, what does it mean? Uh, it means uh, that I have a temporarily uh, lost of my connection, but now I'm here again. So uh, what, uh, what I said uh, is that if we multiply all values of y by the same number, then variance is multiplied by the score of the same number. So uh, I can write something like uh, that variance of a times x is the same as a squared by variance of x. And uh, it means that, uh, for example, if x is measured in centimeters, or in meters, okay, in meters, uh, what is the correct units of measurement for variance? The square of meters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, meters squared. 
so variants have different different units of measure, and um, this can be a problem sometimes. And so instead of variance, sometimes uh, people use a different and a little bit more intuitive uh, measure of central tendency that is called standard deviation. And uh, standard deviation, often abbreviated as SD, is just a square root of variance. So uh, this is basically uh, uh, conveys uh, the same information as variance, uh, but uh, a little bit uh, just numerically adjusted to have the same units of measure. Uh, for example, it is not incorrect uh, to write, uh, and you can you can read it in some reports uh, that, uh, for example, uh, one can report. Uh, something like uh, we had uh, 20 informants uh, age equals to 35 plus minus 7 uh, meaning that Uh, average value is uh, 35 and 7 is a standard deviation. Um, this is not uh, the only way uh, to read this, uh, this kind of um, sentences, but uh, it is often used in, the, in this sense. So people often use this plus minus uh, values to denote uh, this standard deviation. And uh, this is not incorrect in, in, in case of standard deviation because the unit of measurement of standard deviation is the same as uh, the variable itself. So you can uh, theoretically write this plus and minus. This does not make sense. Uh, this, uh, this, do may, uh, this, uh, th uh, this do make sense. Okay. Are there any questions so far?